Alright guys, part two of the content tab video. So in the first video we went through business info and text. So for this one we're going to get through the rest of the sections here. Business images all the way down to site content. And it might be a shorter video as well because collections is its own entity. So it's a whole separate thing. We'll build collections together in a separate video. But there's a quick overview I just want to go through about it. But we're going to start with business images. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I just want to point your attention to this. The first five images will be used for your local business schema, which if you remember in the last video, once you're done building your website and you're about to publish or it is published already, you're going to want to enable local business schema because it makes it easier to find you. So I just added the business logo, I'll add some more, I'll add five, so you can see which kind of images would come up in your schema. Um, I would try to make them as relevant as possible to the niche, so I would put something that has to do with back pain, shoulder pain, maybe neck pain, and maybe the doctor as well. So now we've got five images. You can label them right up here if you wanted to edit any of them, which you would just add a filter, adjust, rotate it, add some text. You do that over there. Um, this is also where you can add alt text, which the way I understand it is text that relates to why this image is on this website and why it's relevant to your content. So if I was trying to rank for NYC chiropractor for neck pain, I would put neck pain chiropractor NYC. Um, and this is just an extra step that'll help you for ranking. So if you want to include some of your keywords in here, some of the keywords that are already in your content, It'll help when Google crawls the images on your website. We'll jump right into collection. So we're not going to be making a new collection right now in this video, but a good way to think about it is if you go onto a realtor's website and they have a bunch of different homes and a bunch of different pictures and it's like each home is its own page. That's what a collection is. That's how you would make one on snaps. So you can integrate third-party apps and you, co you connect a collection to a dynamic page. Um, if you want a better idea of how it works, you can come down here and there's three videos on it that are really helpful. If you just want to wait until we walk through it and make it ourselves on the website, that's fine too. I'm going to go back. We're going to go to find and replace. So this is actually one of my favorite tools on Snaps. It's all about fine tuning and ironing out the details when you're ready to publish your website. So you'll see that there's a phone, mail, and social icons up here. And what it does is it takes the entirety of your website, pulls in all of the phone number links, all of the email or contact form links, and all of the social links. So instead of you having to go through 10 different pages of your website and make sure that all your click to call buttons have the right phone number on them, you would just come here. So it actually pulled in a number that's not one of the phone numbers, so you can skip those. But you'll see right here, I have a phone number somewhere on the home page. It's either a call, a click to call us button, or maybe it's connected data from me typing out the phone number and then I linked it back to my business info. Either way, if there was an issue with the phone number and it came up wrong, it would come up right here as existing phone, and then you would just click and replace it with the phone number right there. So the same goes for the mail options and the social media icon options. So if you were to drag a Facebook widget and it wasn't linked up to the proper Facebook link that you wanted, it would show up right here. I find that this is most useful 
if you didn't fill out the business info in the beginning, but since you already did, you won't need find and replace as much. This is really helpful if you're duplicating a website and you want to use the same layout, but you just want to change the pictures and the information. This is great for when you duplicate a website. So the last thing we're going to get into for this video is your site content. And this is just managing all your files in one place for the whole website. So manage images. If you wanted to delete some images or stock photos, you'd go here, you would click that. You can select as many as you want. You can delete them. You can also rename them here, which is similar to alt text that we did in the business images. Um, you can basically just sort all the images on your site any which way you want them. You can upload new images. And that's pretty straightforward for the manage image section. We're going to close that. You can go to manage files. We don't have any files on this website yet, but once you do, you can get them all in order over here. And the last one is manage form responses, which is from any of your contact forms. You'll, when we build a contact form on a page, you'll see the different types of integration, like with Google Sheets. And if you just want to manage them from your Snaps account, you would just come here. So that's it for this video. It completes the content tab. So in the next video, we can get into building more on the website. And I'll see you in the next one.